Executives at tech firms that don't protect the vulnerable against online harm could be jailed in a new UK bill. And this is interesting because of two things. First and foremost, the very idea of seeing uh, Jack Dorsey, or even better, Mark Zuckerberg, running a real line defense in the showers, surrounded by a hulking and very amorous, not to mention sexually aggressive gentlemen that all weigh six to seven times what they do. Well, it would be funny. I can't say otherwise. But secondly, this is a part of. Well, we've been seeing this more and more. I did a couple of videos this, uh, this last week to kind of show you where we are right now. In the US, very careful, methodical, and slow steps are being taken to try and kind of push a little bit back against the the power of big tech. It's, it's kind of hesitant, it's a little bit small scale, it takes aim at smaller individual levels at a time. Meanwhile, the EU is already preparing to introduce sweeping legislation that targets not just big tech, but a lot of the freedoms of the individuals living in the EU as well. Basically, they're seeing this almost as an excuse to extend their own power, whilst also introducing at least some protections for, well, us who use social media and online platforms. Meanwhile, the UK is going completely budget insane over all of this with the so-called um, online safety bill. Now, this has been rumbling around in the UK uh, parliament, whatever the hell they call it, for quite some time now in various forms and iterations from one another. It began as a pretty draconian piece that would introduce sweeping restrictions on social media platforms, as well as banning a whole host of poorly defined content and making things like online harm illegal. As to what exactly constitutes online harm, well, that's one of those areas again where um, everything's a little bit wishy-washy. It's rather interesting because right now we see that I'd go so far as to say probably most people, most people including legislators, are starting to see the potential damages and harms that big techs are having upon just everyone, everyday people. Social media, for example, has undisputably done one hell of a number on today's youths. Their mental health has been declining rather rapidly and clearly, and we can definitely see parallels between increased social media usage and a general decline in mental health. The always online attitude is not good for hell, a lot of adults, and it certainly isn't good for a whole lot of children. There, just, just to take up the idea of bullying, right? This is something that has always been a problem and will always be a problem because children are goddamn cruel. Simple as, frankly. Hell, adults can be plenty cruel, so it's hardly a surprise that children can be mighty dickish to one another either. But as a kid, when you get off school, that's it. You're home, you're separate from all of that, you can go out with your friends, you can go out to club activities, etc. You have a completely different space. That is, unless you choose to go out and engage with the people again in the outside world, your home is entirely separate from any of this. Meanwhile, now, when you're out of school, you're still on social media. Hell, you're probably not even just on social media, you're probably on a dozen various school project boards or interactive chat rooms set up by your school or various ways of um, doing group projects or handing in assignments also online, particularly during COVID. Your own space has been severely limited and almost completely invaded to the point where you, it's very difficult to disconnect from this unless you, well, take yourself entirely out of the digital space, which is easier said than done, as we can quite clearly see. But to return a bit to the point about governance here, we are starting to see the obvious damages of this, and we are also starting to see the problem with ever-growing tech companies. If Microsoft is able to just drop tens of billions of dollars on Activision Blizzard out of nowhere, the very idea of competition is beginning to disappear. Because to a company like Microsoft, 68-something billion dollars that's, that's just something. There you go. Here you are. It's cash and carry, practically. 
It's absurd. And the power that gives the corporations, particularly when they can also pick up media companies, like exactly what, um, what Activision Blizzard was considering under Bobby Kotick, they wanted to buy Kotaku and PC Gamer for the express purpose of getting them to print whatever goddamn hell they wanted to change the narrative surrounding Activision Blizzard. This is a frightening amount of power, and we've talked about this on multiple occasions. But what this is now causing is... How do we put it? A, um... It's not a purity spiral. If anything, it's... It's it's almost... I don't know if it's a spiral, even. I think it's impatience. Because a lot of measures have been taken, but they've been relatively small and relatively insignificant, and a lot of them have failed as well. There have been several legislations in the past trying to make the social media and the tech giants play by everyone else's rules, and they've usually been either bogged down in the court systems, or simply just circumvented by yet further um, changes to the terms of service. You might remember, there was a while ago with the idea of this kind of a link tax system introduced over in the European Union, and everyone thought this was gonna this was gonna wipe out the internet right because they had to ask you for access to your your data or something they couldn't track you or anything and what happened was that now there's pop-ups everywhere saying hello people in whatever hell uh, we use something something on the side you need to click accept on this and everyone did because you still need to use those sites and you don't even know what the hell's going on it just says that the site needs to use some of your data and yeah, okay, well, what are you going to do about it? Now, if you know what you're doing, you can opt out of a lot of the more predatory stuff, and I highly recommend you do, of course. So it is a valuable tool, but at the end of the day, it's just something that the companies can do a quick workaround by adding a little bit of an uh, I accept or I disagree thing. And if you disagree, they just boot you out of the website, which arounds you at pretty much the same point as with video games. You know the little terms of service agreement at the beginning of the video games? Like, hey, you must agree to all of this! You don't have a choice. This is why they're not legally binding as well. Because you can say no, at which point the only thing that happens is that you don't get access to the video game you've already purchased. <laughs> this is not a problem for the company, obviously. But my point is, a lot of the measures that have been tried simply haven't worked. And so a lot of people, a lot of politicians and legislators like this, are starting to get impatient because they're not getting the wins they're expecting. And a lot of these people are used to be able to throw their weight around and see people bend the knee almost immediately. And when social media doesn't do that, and even worse, simply just dodges the question and comes up with some ridiculous terms of service thing to circumvent all of it, it makes them look an absolute fool. And so they get pissy and they get angry and they get more vindictive. One of the things they mention here, the legislation is dubbed the Nick Clegg Law, as the former Deputy Prime Minister is now Vice President for Global Affairs and Communications at Facebook. This pissed off a lot of UK politicians as they saw one of the most powerfully political figures in their country that goes like, okay, well, I'm just going to join the enemy now. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. I'm home and safe and I'm making millions, if not billions by screwing you over because I know the system and that is exactly why I've been hired. A turncoat, a traitor if you will. Whilst this is the, I mean this, this is probably the most extreme I've seen so far and it is the logical end point where you could now end up in jail, the tech executives could be jailed if, mind you as well, they don't censor things fast enough. And here's the thing, we are the ones caught in the middle of this. We don't want them to censor shit because they are going to censor everything. That's what the social media giants are going to do as well. Once their leadership, and bear in mind it's not going to happen to Mark Zuckerberg, etc. Because this is only of course going to be enforceable in the UK. And the easy ways to get around that is to simply just move the headquarters out of the UK. Voila, nobody can be hurt from it. It's a very stupid law, but it is a logical end point of pissed off politicians, basically. Now, what the social media is going to do, and the various platforms are going to do, as the laws grow ever more stringent, is they are going to broaden their definition of what should and can and must be censored. 
because they don't want to get smacked with massive fines or jail sentences, insanely enough. Meanwhile, the politician is going to look at that and go, hold on, why are you censoring me? Because it's going to affect them as well. We've seen this on multiple occasions now, where uh, the Democrats in the US, for example, pushed for various rules and legislations surrounding big tech's ability to censor, then their ads get smacked by their own rules, and suddenly they turn around, all shocked Pikachu, oh, why are you censoring me? And now they're leading the chance to screw over big tech even further. Because there's no way to win this. This is an endless cycle of buttfuckery, frankly. And the only way to avoid this is for the social media circuits, all the companies, to simply just throw up their hands and go, okay, we're done, we're not playing this game anymore, we're a platform, we take zero responsibility for anything that's going on here, no matter what. Beyond, like, the most blatantly illegal content, like, you know, mass executions, etc., which was still up on Facebook for quite a while, by the way, too, on ISIS and such on. We take no responsibility whatsoever. We're going to move to some tiny Micronesian country that has no legislation around this, and we are going to pour so much money into their coffers that they will never even think of introducing it. And the problem is as well, because that might sound lovely, it is the enemy of the middle ground, it is the enemy of the average, the good, the, the center, where you can find a reasonable solution to everyone's problem. Right now, the tech companies are escalating their concerns because they can see that they are being targeted, to the point that they're even trying to convince people like Ted Cruz that they shouldn't screw them, which is highly unlikely. Meanwhile, the politicians are being frustrated with having their efforts, well, frustrated, and so they're now going completely off the rails and trying to introduce legislation where they can jail the people they don't like to really properly put the screws in. Or, you know, I, I think it was a $15,000 running fine or something like that. It was something absurd. Oh god, the wars have begun. The, t the corporation versus government war has begun. They haven't started shooting at one another yet, which I suppose is a small mercy, but, um, well, if a big-name tech executive, which probably has their own security services, is about to be arrested by the police, what's gonna happen? Oh, probably nothing, they'll probably just put down their weapons because it's the goddamn police, but wouldn't it be funny if they didn't? <laughs> Actual cyberpunk. Oh man, it was a meme? Well, it's starting to get ever more realistic. And hey, it might be funny. Cyberpunk 2077 might have sucked, but hopefully the real-life version is more uh, realistic, engaging, and uh, immersive, if you will. Until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you all for listening, and I hope to see you all again soon. Till then, have a good day.